The color wheel is very important for artists when it comes to creating art. Selecting colors or mixing colors is just as important as understanding why they work together. The color wheel is an arrangement of colors based on their relationships and is useful in creating harmonious color schemes. Complementary colors enhance each other's intensity when placed right next to each other, which is why they are often used to create bold, high-contrasting works of art. So let's get started on this invaluable artist's tool. I haven't done any watercolor paintings in years, and it's something I'd really like to get back into. So while I'm not exactly a beginner, I thought it would be fun if we could learn some new watercolor tips and tricks together. I thought we'd do a fun color wheel exercise. I think it will be very beneficial when I'm relating to you what colors I'm using, why, and how to mix them in my future tutorials. I drew up this color wheel as a visual aid to help us learn some more about mixing and color theory. If you'd like to use the same version of this color wheel, I plan to post this in my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description box below. I temporarily labeled the color wheel, so later I will write in the names of the colors. I'm using a filbert shaped brush. I probably should have used a pointed round brush, but I eventually got the hang of it. Use whatever brush you are most comfortable with. Starting with permanent red deep, I mix just enough of the color to create a puddle of color on my palette. Not too much water because you don't want to dilute it. I'm starting with the primary colors, which I will use to create the other colors. So don't be tempted to clean off your palette. In hindsight, I wish I had used a slightly darker red for this one. Turned out to be a bit too orange in color. Next is orange. The reason I'm skipping every other one is because I don't want the colors to bleed into one another. And now permanent yellow. and hooker's green. And now for cobalt blue. and of course violet. When I started painting the color wheel, perhaps I wasn't thinking clearly and decided to only fill in the largest square, which represents the darkest, least diluted color value but I decided to go ahead and fill in the lighter shades while the paint is still wet. In order to get a lighter shade, but of the same color, you just add water. It looks like I didn't quite get an even graduation of orange, but the great thing about watercolor is I can still go back and darken things up a bit.
With paper towels, I swatch the mixture to see what tone of red I've mixed. Then I add more orange to get an even mixture. Not too red, not too orange. An even mixture of permanent red and violet for red violet. and blue-violet. An even mixture of hooker's green and cobalt blue for blue-green. I never realized how easy it was to mix up a color very similar to Viridian Green. I can't really express to you enough how much this video has enlightened me when it comes to color theory. When I first put down my mixture of hooker's green and permanent yellow deep, I could see that it wasn't quite an even mixture. So I rinsed my brush off with clean water and dipped it into my yellow, then distributed the yellow into the wet green paint, giving it a slightly more of a yellow tint. Permanent yellow deep and orange for yellow orange. Okay. Yeah, this exercise was so fun. And I didn't ever dream that I would be able to mix these colors. And it did take a little bit of mixing and a little bit of doing, but this was so cool like I didn't think that this exercise was going to be as enjoyable as it is but <laughs> yes I'm just so like amazed like I've always been um, relatively unsure of mixing colors myself and then teaching somebody else to do it seemed like a really daunting uh, task and I'm like well you know I don't know very much about color theory or why I'm mixing that color, but it just does seem to work. But like doing this, I can definitely see now how to explain it better to other people. So um, I think the only thing I would change is maybe the red it needs to be a little bit more of a darker red. But no, I'm extremely happy with this. This turned out so pretty. Next, I'm going to trace over my pencil lines and write in all the names of the paints. Microns are waterproof, have archival quality, Pigma ink are non-smearing when dry, waterproof and chemical proof, fade resistant, and don't bleed through most papers. Now that my color wheel has completely dried, I'm going to erase all my pencil lines. I 
labeled each color with a dot system. One dot for primary colors, two dots for secondary colors, and three dots for tertiary colors. Okay, now let's learn how to use this color wheel. Complementary colors, colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. Split complementary colors, colors directly across from each other but separated by one color. Triadic complementary colors, colors that are directly across from each other but separated by three colors. Rectangular complementary colors, colors that are directly across from each other but separated by one color. Square complementary colors, colors that are directly across from each other but separated by two colors. Analogous complementary colors, two to three colors right next to each other on the color wheel. Okay, I hope that demystifies any confusion on how to use the color wheel. These same rules, or guidelines, apply across all mediums of art supplies. This same color wheel can be filled in with other forms of media, such as watercolor pencils, colored pencils, chalks, acrylic paints, whatever you want.